an invisible, unintelligible, but powerful force that crushes all who fail to understand it. The Wheel of Dharma is not simply a tool to help one understand the concept of karma. It represents the fundamental cycle of the universe itself, a cyclical process of actions and consequences that there is no escape from. Many have tried to escape it, great conquerors, hoarders of wealth, and mass manipulators, but all have failed. We may try to convince others that money or power can help us escape from the wheel, but we are simply recruiting more people to be crushed under its perpetual turn. As followers of many of these great people, we should ask ourselves, why does it never work out like they say it will? We do everything they tell us to do. We buy the program, repeat the simple life quotes, change the daily routine, and keep listening to them yet we never come anywhere close to what they promise. Every new thesis on life seems to always place us right back in the same spot, searching for something new and meaningful to justify the suffering of this up and down. Buddhism offers us a chance to work out a solution, but it is admittedly hard for many of us Westerners to wrap our heads around. We seem to have this view that life is some big machine, some complicated set of gears and processes that has already worked out, and that all we need is the key to stick in and make the whole thing run the right way. This leaves us vulnerable to all kinds of promises. You've heard them before. The 10 minutes that'll change your life, the speech that will empower you to overcome anything, or the diet pill that will cut out all of the time and effort. The thing is, though, there is no key. No grand realization or daily life quote that will change anything. This might seem like a letdown at first, but just bear with us because this is what you really need to hear if you want to learn how to change everything yourself. In this video, we will highlight the central elements of Buddhism in order to find a way of living that is helpful for the average person just trying to navigate a confusing world and figure out what happiness means for them. Let's start with the origins of Buddhism itself. As it was far from a mystical or abstract thing for the founder himself, Siddhartha Gautama. Siddhartha's life was one of luxury from the very beginning. He was born a prince and raised under the abundant and luxurious conditions of the royal palace. However, his luxury was elevated further by his father, the king, because of a prophecy attached to Siddhartha at birth. It was foretold that his life would go one of two paths. He would either follow in his father's footsteps and become a great king, or he would become a man of holy commitments one who would forego the worldly pleasures of the rich, greedy and powerful, for a life that sought peace both mentally and with nature. His father, of course, was a little biased towards his son becoming the king, as he was his heir, but his bias would actually serve to bring about the very opposite outcome. Siddhartha was kept so far from the realities of human life outside the palace that he was not prepared for it when he finally ventured out into the world as a young adult. The horrible conditions he witnessed, the poor and starving, the old and dying, the sick and feeble. It was all too much for him. And the fact that he and a few others in the palace had so much abundance that they couldn't even figure out what to do with it pushed him to take a new path. Perhaps if his father had slowly introduced him to the world, he would have become a pragmatic king who was used to such realities. But in his greed, the king manifested his greatest fear. The irony of that story plays right into a central theme that we can import from Buddhism into our lives, but more on that later. So he's decided to forego his luxury for a life of meditation and peace, but how did he set himself apart from the rest? There were already plenty of holy men and ascetic monks in India at the time, but Siddhartha found that their extreme asceticism and distance from life itself didn't actually solve many of the problems at the root. He decided that there must be a middle path here, a middle way where life can be navigated without adding even more suffering on, trying to cling to extreme principles. This is a good lesson for life overall, be it political choices, moral principles, or how to deal with problems in your relationships. Clinging to extreme principles that simplify the world only serve to make life even harder. There is always a middle path where people can come to see eye to eye without holding any grudges or hate. As he gained insights and meditated over many years, he began to lay out a few things for others to follow if they wanted to take the same path. And these are important to our task of mining Buddhism for things to help with our everyday lives. 
The ultimate goal was, as many of you probably already know, nirvana. This is a state of enlightenment that comes after a moment of awakening, which is called bodhi. And once here, one has moved past the desires and material attachments that add to the suffering we experience in life. Even the process of aging and dying are of no consequence to such an enlightened one, because life takes on a whole new conception, and death is simply another part of life as a whole. This, however beautiful, of course strikes many of us as a bit out there. For the rest of us just trying to work a job, save some money, have some fun, and just generally not completely screw up in life, achieving nirvana isn't exactly something we can dedicate much time to. But fear not, because there is still plenty of gold here. When we think of such an awakened state, simply look at it as a time when you have come to see yourself for who you really are, and have matured past the things that held you back. A time when you know what you want and you can't be manipulated by ads and peer pressure. We could even simply call it happiness. Quoting a Buddhist master, Alan Watts once said that it is just like regular life, but floating about two inches off the ground. Just light, happy, unencumbered, and free. So, how do we get to this point? Let's unpack the Four Noble Truths and try to find out. The first truth is that life is suffering. This might sound a bit pessimistic, but hear us out. It's not about fixating on the negative. It's about ditching the overly optimistic, romanticized versions of the world we paint for ourselves. These outlooks only serve to create a mismatch between our expectations and reality, and this creates even more suffering beyond the things we can't control like old age, sickness, and death. Number two, suffering comes from desire. Carrying on from the last point, we mustn't get too caught up in getting a bunch of stuff. Money, status, you've heard it all before. We all act like we are above that, but with how much attention and money we give to celebrities and influencers, it's hard to say we really live it out. Just listen to any interview with a rich person past their prime. They all say the same thing. Money does not bring happiness in the end. Number three, by ceasing desire, we can get rid of suffering. So, by this line of logic so far, if we can outgrow those materialistic desires, we will significantly reduce our suffering and anxiety. And number four, to achieve this, one must follow the middle way and the Eightfold Path. The Eightfold Path is a set of, essentially, habits that can lead one to the enlightened state. They are right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. And this is what takes us back to the beginning and the idea of the perpetual wheel of karma. For our purposes, it doesn't need to have a full-blown cosmic connotation, but it should be clear that actions have consequences. We cannot outrun cause and effect, and we cannot do one thing but mean another. You mean what you do and not considering the consequences of what you do, both for your life and those around you, is a form of doing wrong. Of course, it's pretty hard, and life is pretty hard, as the Buddhists like to remind us. That's why the Eightfold Path is such a critical lesson. If you want to be better, if you want change, you need to embody it. You don't get to be better by picking some principle or group to be a part of, and then just being loyal to it. A good and happy life is built brick by brick, one small, difficult, and mundane action at a time. There is no key to some big machine of life, but that also means that the power to change it isn't anywhere out there to find or get from anyone else. You can't buy it, sell it, preach it, or enforce it, but you can build it yourself. And once you do, no one can take that from you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.